Welcome to the dojo. Today I'm going to show you how to create this cartoon effect inside of Photoshop. So let's start opening this image inside of Photoshop. You can find the link to this image in the description of this video. Now that we have this image, we need to duplicate it. So we select our layer with our curl. Let's first rename it and then duplicate it clicking Command J or Control J. So we made a copy of the layer. And now with this layer selected, we need to apply an effect called Filter Stylize Oil Paint. So we click on Oil Paint. And what this does is turning the image into a oil paint picture. Uh, so here we got several options that we need to change. So let's start with stylization and we want to bring this really high. Let's try something like, it depends from every picture, but let's start something like five. Seems pretty good. Just look at the little preview here in this square, because if you, you can also activate the preview on your actual image, but this will make your computer go a little bit slower. So let's keep the preview only in this little square over here. So stylization really high, uh, clean lightness. Um, we keep it really high too, so keep it to 10. Uh, we keep the scale, in this case, really low. So 0.7 seems fine. Uh, Bristol detail is fine as it is. And then in this lightning section over here, we want the shine to be 0.5. And the angle doesn't really matter, but you can change it if you want. After we've done this, we just click OK. And this is the first step we got. Second thing we want to do is to include this image inside a group. So we create a group clicking Command G or Control G. So our new layer is inside the group. And we call this illustration. And now we want to just give this group a specific mask. So because we want to only have the cartoon effect over the head of the girl, we can start masking it out. So we take our pen tool in this case and try to draw the perimeter of our image. So let's say that we want all this area to be included into the cartoon effect. So just go on and slowly select all the portions we need to include. Uh, we want to include the hairs. Uh, I will keep this hair over here out now and maybe we could fix it later. Uh, so let's just keep the big portions of the hair. And then I don't want to include the clothing. So I just go around her shirt. And then I want to gain the hair over here. And then I want this little curl over here, over here. And then we can close the selection. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now we turn the selection, uh, this vector mask into a selection. So we click Command Return or Control Return to make the selection. And now we apply this mask to our group layer. So with the group selected, we just click this little mask icon over here. And so we have a selection. And so whatever happens inside our group will be masked inside this shape. So you can already see what's happening with our image. We only apply the oil paint effect in the face. Okay, next thing we want to do is turn it into a black and white image. So we go over down here and select black and white. And we did this instead of using U and saturation because with black and white, we have more options to control and, and change the lightness of specific colors of the image. And this will be really useful later on in this tutorial. So after the black and white, we want to go down here again and select posterize. What Posterize does convert our image into a posterized version that only has a specific number of uh, colors. So in this case, this value over here, these levels, determines how many colors there will be in our posterized version of the image. So if you keep it the lowest, there is two, we only have a black and white image. So the more you go up with this value, the more uh, levels of gray you get. In this case, I just want to keep five layers in total. So select five and that's it. But now you see the result is not really the most beautiful result. And we have several ways to now fix this thing. First thing I want to do is I want to duplicate my layer, this one down here. Uh, let's call this oil paint. 
I want to duplicate this oil paint and I'll call this shadow and highlights. Call the shadow and highlights just because I want to use the effect called shadow and highlights. So we go to image, adjustment, shadows, highlights. So what shadow and highlights does, uh, it basically brings more light to the shadow and more darkness to the highlights. This is to have a, a less contrasty picture and also bring out a little bit more information and more details. So in this case, this is the original one. What I want is just try to bring up the shadows and a little bit down the highlights or maybe maybe the highlights are fine now let's bring them down uh, just because i want to have a more flat kind of image this way is going to be more effective later on when we need to turn it into an actual illustration so this is the first result we get and now we go over black and white and we create a new layer of levels so once we apply it, nothing happens, but then we want to move the, our sliders a little bit. And you can see already that all these things we're doing now is just to create specific areas of the image that are going to be uh, more or less white or more or less gray. Uh, so this is actually the most important step to build uh, the illustration with, the way we want it. So yeah, you see before and after. This is what's happening with these levels over here. And I want to try to build the type of level of layers of uh, black gray and white in a way that actually is drawing uh, my image in a most appropriate way so let's see how it happens i think that this is quite good as it is uh, maybe it could be a little darker okay looks all right but also i want to have a more specific control so i don't want to just apply it to the whole image i want to try to apply to specific areas that maybe i want to bring a bit more light into so i'll create a new layer of levels this time i bring up the luminosity just because i want a bit more light in the eyes and now i'll reverse the masks with command i or control i and with a soft brush with white selected i want to slowly paint over the eye, so I get less less darkness over here. Maybe I bring it a little bit more on top. And every time you want to reverse whatever you're doing, just change the color to black, just clicking X and paint again. So have a look at what's happening. We're basically bringing more lights to the eye. All right, and we can do, keep doing the same thing in other areas that we think they're too dark. For example, over here. All right, look good. And cool. Now that we have this result, we want to select all the layers we have inside our illustration group and click together Common Option E or Control Alt E to create a copy with all the layers selected, merged into a single layer. And now that we have this layer over here, we want to apply again our oil paint. So go back to stylize oil paint. And let's see, let's see what's the result here. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good already. So let's try to click OK and use the same settings we had before. And as you see, now we just smoothed everything out a little bit more. And this is already a pretty good result, but if you want, you can also create a new layer of levels and play around with luminosity and contrast and try to make it exactly how you want it. Okay, this is a really good starting point, but what we can do now is also apply a specific color, color to our image. Uh, so let's go down here and create a new gradient map. So gradient map is really powerful and what it does, it applies specific gradient to all the colors of the image. What I mean is whatever the color is on the left is gonna be applied to the darkest area. So the black is gonna turn into this color while the brightest points, the white, is gonna be turned into the color over here. So if we put this green, for example, the white's gonna be green and all the layers of gray in the middle is gonna be turned into the colors that are part of this gradient. So in this case, I just want a white as a white color 
And for the dark color, I don't want black, I just want a more gray out color. So let's try with a, yeah, uh, no, maybe 40% brightness, seems good. So click OK and OK again. And this is what we get. And now I want to go in my illustration group, double click on the group, and I want to create a stroke out of my image. So I want the stroke to be outside, uh, the size to be 10 pixel, and the color to be white or even black could look good, but white is my choice for now. So let's click OK and OK again. Now this is not really visible because the background of this image is a little bit too bright. So maybe we can tone it down a little bit. So create a new layer. We select our gradient tool over here. If you don't see it, it's under the paint bucket tool. So select the layer. Let's select black as a foreground color, click in D. And then up here, we select the second icon. And then we basically dra drag and drop. And we create this really smooth black transition. And now we can remove the fill a little bit just to make it just a tiny bit darker. So we see the perimeter of our illustration. So you can already see before and after what happened. So now that we have this, if you're not happy with a specific area, you can always just go and try to fix it. Maybe you can play again with the levels and make everything a bit more dark or a bit more light, depending on your preference. And if you want to remove even those little brush strokes that you see over the image, there is another little trick. So we select our layer over here, it's called Posterize 1. And we go to Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. So what Surface Blur does, as you, as you can see, it's just moving out all the dirtiness that we wasn't in the image before. So you just need to play around with those values and try to find a balance that works well for your image. So depending on your image, this can change. But for mine, I'll just keep the threshold to 15 and the radius maybe 10, 20. Yeah, seems fine. So click OK. And you see the before and after. It just makes everything a little more smooth. And that's it. That was basically it. It was pretty simple. And it just took a couple of minutes to turn our image from this to this. Thank you so much for joining the dojo. If you had any trouble with this process, please let us know in the comments and we'll try to help you. If you create something cool with this technique, we would love to see it. So share your results and tag the dojo tutorials on Instagram. If you want more of these videos, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.